Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so, before I start my presentation, I'd like to um, start with some mindfulness. Because Mr. Me sponsored this. No. Um, can everyone please close your eyes? All right. I want you to take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Now, I want you to imagine the entrance to the main building. I want you to open the door to the main building and you see the black rug that's often wet. And I want you to enter. And in the front of you, you see the counter where we get our snacks every night. And there are a bunch of shoes in front just like we always see it every day. Now, I want you to imagine Boom. Boom Tong Samui. I want you to imagine him picking up one of those shoes and eating them. I want you to imagine the taste of the shoe, the smell that the shoe is emanating, Boom's crunching sounds, Boom saying it's so good. I want you to see that there. Now, let's walk past Boom, let's go upstairs. And as we walk upstairs, I want you to imagine a giant cupcake. And out from the cupcake, I want you to imagine Malika popping out. And there's frost, frosting everywhere, all this pink frosting. She's eating it. I want you to imagine the taste of a cupcake. I want you to imagine Malika eating the cupcake, her sticky fingers touching all of the frosting. Now walk past Malika. I want you to imagine the DI corner, or the creative space. Now, I want you to imagine Gurmuk and Gurbani. And I want you to imagine Gurmuk holding up Gurbani like they're gymnasts. <laughs> I want you to imagine the sweat pouring down Gurmuk's face, Gurbani's scared face, um, Gurmuk sh shaking because he don't, he's not sure that he can hold her up for much longer, the sweat dribbling down his face. I want you to imagine all of that, all the details. Now walk past them and enter the physics room or where you have info science. I want you to imagine Mitsu running around because a dinosaur is chasing him. I want you to imagine him screaming and the dinosaur roaring and the room shaking because he's, the dinosaur is so big. Imagine the fear, the sound of Mitsu running, the clothes he's wearing. And then leave the physics room and as you walk by the hall, there are some tables where some of us study. I want you to imagine Kana break dancing. She's doing some mad dance moves. There's sweat pouring down her face. She's spinning on her head. She's doing all these crazy things. And I want you to imagine the feeling that you have seeing that. Imagine her break dancing. Now walk past Kana and enter the art room. And I want you to imagine Jean. But I want you to imagine Jean as a ninja, throwing shurikens across the room, them whizzing by your ear, her doing the hya, hua, jumping around the room. Imagine every detail, what clothes she's wearing, the color of her clothes, where she's jumping, where are the shurikens landing in the art room. All right, open your eyes. What you've just done is what memory, yeah, that's Jean. <laughs> What you've just done is what memory champions all over the world do in order to memorize thousands of pieces of information. It's called the memory palace, also known as the method of loci. So this method is created by the Greeks. And there's an ancient proverb about Simonidas, and basically he's known as the founder for this. And the story goes that he was at a party once in Greece, and he took a step out. And as he left, the whole building collapsed, and everyone died and he was a sole survivor. People were looking for the bodies of their loved ones, but they couldn't find them. But Simonidas thought of an idea. He closed his eyes, and he imagined where every single guest was in the room. And from that, he could figure out where the bodies were, and he helped them find their loved ones. So this was the first use of the memory palestinique, or the method of loci. Uh, loci is plural for locus, which means a location. So, what you just did now is you memorized the birthdays of the next seven people. First you saw Boom, whose birthday is tomorrow, and then you saw Malika, 
And then you saw Gurmuk and Gurbani, who share a birthday. Then you saw Mitsu running around from the dinosaur, then Kana breakdancing, and finally Jean. Seven birthdays. And, you meant, and that's how people, mem that's how the champions memorize information like that. So the procedure is simple. And this is the most fundamental technique for memorizing large amounts of information. So first you create a list of loci. You create a room. So for me, I often use the main building to memorize information. Specifically, I use the main building for economics terms. So in my head, when I think about the main building, I'm, it's scattered with pieces of information that help me remember economics. If I want to imagine inflation, there's a man in the science room who's inflating. And that's how I memorize inflation. So after you have a list of, uh, after you have a room, a memory palace, then you can attach pieces of information to each part of that room. So again, if I was walking through the main building, I could have each room have a piece of information. In this case, that's what we did. The, main, the entrance was the room for Boom, the stairs were the room for Malika, etc. cetera. Um, if I want to memorize more information, sometimes I go into more detail. So I imagine my common room, or I imagine my home in the Philippines, and I shrink myself to an inch. And I imagine where all my toys are, where my pillows are, where my clothes are, and each one, I attach information to that. Because how many of us know where everything is in our room? I know where every piece of important item that I have in my room is. I know where it's all located. Because our spatial awareness is very strong. Whether you have that sense of direction, you still know where things are, because that's how we survive. And so that's what this method uses, and that's what it utilizes. So if you want to memorize a piece of information, first you just imagine a place. So you can imagine your home, you can imagine your room, and then you create objects in that place. And then when you want to remember a piece of information, you just attach them to that object. In order to make the attachments stronger, in order to help you really memorize them, you have to use a lot of your senses. So when I thought, when I made you imagine what the cupcake tasted like, what the feeling of holding uh, frosting is, that sticky feeling, that helps your brain create stronger synapses and helps the memory really stick. And so the more, um, the more senses you can use, the more things you get, more details you add to it, the stronger the emotion. Um, there are some memory champions who use emotions. So if they want to memorize a number, they have a certain emotion that they tie with that. So there are different ways to do this. So here's some tips, some cute tips. Um, so the first tip I have for you if you want to use this method is get creative. The more bizarre, the more crazy the association. So having, Rex, I'm having Mitsu run around the um, science room with a T-Rex chasing him, the more crazy it is, the easier it is to remember. And it's also funner for us to remember because you're creating a more interesting story for yourself. Second, it's the details. So the more details you add to it, knowing what color the dinosaur is, if he's, if he's brown, if he's pink, if he's yellow, having these memories helps make the strong, uh, makes a stronger connection. And finally, notice what works. So for different people, different techniques, different details will make it clearer for you. So maybe for you, emotions really helps um, create a strong bond. And then maybe for other people, it's the imagery. Having a really stark image helps it um, stick with your brain. Um, and so having that, having more personal connections helps make this method work. So that's the basic level. And if any of you are interested in pursuing this as I, wanting to memorize more information or harder information, there's something called the major system. So the major system is like the next step forward. And it's the farthest step that I've gotten. Um, and basically what it is, is it's a mnemonic for numbers. So each number from zero to nine has a certain sound associated with it. So zero has a su, one has a ta and a da, two has a m, three has a m. So if I want to memorize the word 17, if I want to memorize the number 17, I can think of da, because it has a da and a ka sound, so one seven. If I want to memorize the number 91, I can do bat, so because it has a ba and a ta sound. So if I wanted to memorize, so what is poop? What number is poop? 99. 99, yeah. So that's basically how you do it. So instead of putting boom in the front eating um, shoes, 
you can imagine poop, just poop everywhere. It's just really poopy. And that's, so then you can memorize, oh, 99. That's the first number I have to recall. And then the next step from this, and this one's really hard is, so you have numbers, um, so each number has an object, right? So you can have each number have a person. So Yasu, he can be a certain number. He can be like 15, depending on what the mnemonic is, right? So you'd be zero, because there's no ya. So Yasu would be zero, right? So he's the person. And then I, have a, I would have a set of objects for um, an object, like set of objects for numbers, and a set of objects for actions. So if this is not clear, basically, duck is 17, right? And then I can, have, I can imagine a duck holding a bat, and a bat is 91. And then I can imagine a duck with a bat pooping, and pooping is 99. And so I just memorized the number 17, 91, 99. And so I just imagine Donald Duck in the front of the main building holding a bat and he's pooping everywhere. And then I just memorized six pieces of information, 17, 91, and 99. And that's how, that's how the pros do it. So um, if you master this and if you practice this, and the champions practice for like 20 minutes every day. That's, that's all it takes to be able to get strong at this. And so, if you want to practice, there's something called the World Memory Championship. And basically what it is, is it's a giant event where a bunch of nerds who want to memorize stuff come together. And there are 10 disciplines that they have to do. So, some of them are like, they have to memorize like a couple hundred digits in uh, like 30 minutes, I think. They have to memorize a couple hundred faces in 10 minutes or something, or 30 minutes. They have to memorize a deck of cards in under five minutes. And so all these events, people compete and they get to try and get the best times and be the most accurate. And then the winner is the world memory champion, right? And so it's a pretty cool event if you're into that really nerdy stuff. Um, and so that's like the next step forward. So the guy in the back, his name is Ben Pridmore and he's one of the older members of this. And he's pretty popular in the memory scene. Wow, that's kind of nerdy. In the memory scene. And he's known for, um, he set the record for memorizing a deck of cards fastest. He memorized a deck of cards, 52 random cards, in 25 seconds. Using all the techniques I just showed you. Um, and then, in this picture, he's memorizing 36 decks of cards in an hour. So, and again, like, he's not the only one. There's a bunch of people doing it. So this is a common thing. People reach this standard. And, yeah. So, what I wanted to show you is just a technique for memorizing information. It's not the only technique, it's not the main technique, but it's a technique that works for me. And it's a technique that I hope that you can try and use it. But you can try and use. But ultimately, it's up to you to practice this, to choose to sit down and think about the information and putting it in there, in your memory palace. It doesn't work for everyone, but it's something that you can, get, you can try and it's a, little, it's a fun process for dealing with this information and thinking about it. Um, and I think one of the most important things that I took from doing this for um, around half a year is that it really helped me learn more about how I memorize things. It, learned, it helped me learn more about how I deal with information and what information really sticks with me. And for me, the experiences that I have, the memories that I share, that's what makes me, me. And so I hope that you guys take that all with you when you finish yeah, when you finish this presentation. Thank you. So um, just some other stuff. If you want a really fun book, except I heard Boo doesn't like it. If you want a really fun book, there's this book called Moonwalking with Einstein. So I told you about the person object action. So moonwalking is an action and Einstein is the person. So that has some sort of meaning. Um, so Moonwalking with Einstein is a really good book. It's written by um, this guy called Joshua Foyer, who is a journalist. He started learning about this and then he wanted to really practice it. So he tried to practice it and he tried to, he got a lot of tests done, he talked to the pros, and by the end of the book, um, well, you'll see. It's something, it's pretty awesome. Um, and it talks about both sides. So is this actually practical? Is this actually useful? Is technology gonna make this obsolete? And then if you wanna learn more about it from like a forums, 
um, Art of Memory is a really good website where there's a bunch of nerds talking about techniques for memorizing different information. So like there's, for chemistry students, there's a technique for memorizing um, the periodic table, all the elements in the order. And there's a, people have talked about ways, what's the best way to memorize that? What are the best objects to imagine in your memory palace? So that's a cool place to get, um, to have some discussion. They talk about math as well. So I've used that to try and memorize math formulas. Um, and yeah, it's really cool. Hi. Um, are there any questions? Okay, Ashley then B. Okay, so when you were talking about imagining an inflatable math in the science room, yeah. and you thought about inflation in economics, mm. like what about inflation do you remember? Do you remember just like on the term inflation what exists? Or do you remember other things associated with it? Okay, so right, so when I came up so the problem with that example was because when I came up with that, I was doing it the night before the exam. And so a lot of the, I was, I was able to memorize it and I got a pretty good score with the DD, with the definitions, but they don't stick. So you have to really go back and see the palaces, right? So, um, like, okay, so one of the things you have to memorize is demerit good. And so when I memorized demerit good, I imagined that corner at the end of the hall, I just imagined cigarettes everywhere and people just like falling over on the cigarettes because they were dying. Because a demerit good is something that when they consume it, it's bad for them. It creates a negative externality on the third party. Econ students, am I right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, that's what I would do. And then down the hall by the stairs, I had merit good, and I had someone talking to me about education and healthcare or something like that. So that's how I memorized those econ definitions. So for inflation, um, I believe what I did was I had someone inflating because of. Um, oh, I had yeah. Okay, it gets more complicated there for me. So yeah, I'll just stop there. <laughs> me. It, it depends on how strong, you, how much time you spend strengthening that, right? So I, I, like, I get impatient sometimes, and so I rush through it. Um, so like another experience I, where this helped me a lot was, like Tony can attest to this, I forgot that there was a Japanese test. And so I had like 10 minutes to spare, and we had like, what, 30 definitions or something? Yeah. And so I borrowed her Quizlet, and I just went through each term. And because I knew that, uh, I knew what sort of details would help me remember, like having really crazy things, um, it helped me memorize all the terms, and I got I got like half a mark wrong or something like that because I misspelled a word, um, and so it lasted. That I just needed that to last me ten minutes, and it did. Um, for econ, what I usually do is I memorize it the night before. I go through my Quizlet. That's why I have so many Quizlets is because it helps me do this technique. And then the morning after, while I'm like daydreaming in like someone's class, I go through my palace. And I check up on all the definitions. And if I forget one, like I forgot, oh, what's in the chemistry room? I go through my Quizlet. And then by the time of the exam, because I've gone through it twice, it's pretty solid in there. And it'll last me the day. So it just depends on how much you refer back to your memory palace, how much you spend really adding details to it. Uh, yeah, any other questions? Hi, thank you.